fair to say, I think, that you've probably seen most of these before. So, for example, things like the Access and Mobility Management function. Okay, I mean, this is the new name um, for the MME. Uh, obviously, it's it, it's software based, you know, so it's a bit of software that thinks it's an MME, but its position in the network and its responsibilities and the other things that it connects to is what makes it a little bit different to the MME. But it is, as you would expect it to be, responsible for things like registration and mobility management. So it knows where the user equipment is and it knows the names of the user equipment to a certain extent. Uh, and it's responsible, at least in part, or things like authentication and authorization to access the network resources. And there is non-access strata mobility management as well. So that means doing re-registrations, keeping a track of the tracking area that the mobile is in. So it knows who the mobile is, it knows where the mobile is, and it kind of knows more or less what the mobile is doing. We also have in the network a session management function. Uh, now this is similar to the P gateway control plane and that's the important part really because the p gateway or the ggsn they had both the control plane and the user plane as part of the same functional node in the network but because we like things like uh, cups the control and user plane separation uh, we've looked at the p gateway and we said okay which parts of this do control things and we separated those control things now into its own function which we now refer to as the session management function it still has a relationship with the user plane part of the network, which is the user plane function. But the session management function, you will recognize many of these things. Session management signaling towards the UE. Whenever there is sessions to be started, stopped, modified, it is the session management function which talks to the user equipment. It is the part in the network where if we are supporting it, we address uh, or allocate um, IP addresses to the mobile. So IPv4 or IPv6. And as I indicated with this interface, uh, it is also the management entity in respect of the user plane function. So it tells the user plane function what to do. Start sessions, stop sessions, modify sessions, and so on. We do have a database in the network, formerly known as the HSS, the Home Subscriber Server, uh, now referred to as the UDM or the Unified Data Management. And that is the place in the network where we store all of the subscriber data. Uh, it has a slightly different structure, I suppose. Um, it does all of the things you would expect the HSS to do, but the back end of this uh, may be a little different to what you have in your LTE network at the moment. But as far as all of the network components are concerned, if you want to know a thing about the mobile, or about the subscriber, I should say, uh, then you contact the UDM. So, for example, uh, during the registration procedure, one thing the AMF has to do is it has to talk to the big database uh, to find out about this mobile. And then we need to retrieve context information to be stored at the AMF before we authorize the user to access the network. So in terms of a procedure, that sounds a little bit like LTE. And to all intents and purposes, it's very much like LTE. Uh, but because the core network is using these software-based functions, this exchange that you see here is a rather different set of exchanges uh, to the one that you might be, might be familiar with in LTE. The other part of the UDM is the authentication center. Okay, so the bit in the network that knows all of the secret numbers that only the UE or the SIM card knows. However, we have a, an extra entity in this network now, which acts as, a, as a, an authentication proxy or an authentication broker on behalf of the AMF. So this authentication server function that we now have is in the signaling process or in the signaling chain whenever we are doing authentication. So during the authentication process, and again, we'll see this in detail later on, the AMF asks the authentication server function for authentication of the user. The authentication server function then contacts the UDM and speaks to the authentication server function. And then authentication credentials can be passed back in this direction. That was a thing that the MME used to do. Um, so you know, it would receive directly from the HSS, the authentication tokens, the vectors and so on, before it would then challenge the mobile. So we have an intermediate function now separated out from the MME, and that's useful in terms of roaming. So that enables us to authenticate not only the UE, but allows the UE to authenticate the network as well. But where there is a roaming scenario and there are two operators, two different domains talking to each other, then each domain is able to authenticate each other as well. So like the HSS, that authentication server function always remains in the home network as well. And to assist with the PDU sessions and the properties or quality of service of those PDU sessions, we have a PCF. 
similar, of course, to the PCRF, uh, the policy and charging rules function. Uh, it is now just the PCF. So this is something that the session management function would speak to. So, of course, one thing we need to do down here is we need to build connections through this part of the network. And in order that we know how to manage those connections for a particular UE, the session management function may recover quality of service related rules from the PCF so that it can then tell the user plane function uh, what to do, how fast or slow or important the connections through the user plane might be. Because we now have a network which uh, will support network slicing, we have a new network function included here. Now the network slice selection function. Now during the registration procedure, what the AMF will do is having recovered, it will talk to the UDM, it will get subscriber related information or subscription related information. And in there will be a description of network slices that this UE might like to be connected to. So we may have a mobile broadband slice, we might have a voice over LTE slice or a voice over IP slice. So what the AMF will have to do is to talk to the network slice selection function to say, how do I find these slices? Which functions in the network are in support of the mobile broadband slice and the voice over IP slice and the whatever other slice there is in there. The network slice selection function can then tell the AMF where to find all of the other functions in the network. Now, this is where the whole network slicing thing starts to maybe rear its head a little bit. Uh, there is generally speaking a single AMF which manages all the slices with respect to a UE. But there may be other functions, in particular things like the user plane functions and session management functions may all be separate or on a per slice basis. So there may be multiple session management functions, uh, each one of those responsible for a particular network slice. So the answer that we're going to get back off the NSSF is that for the mobile broadband slice, then you need to contact and uh, communicate with SMF number one or SMF number two, whatever that might be. So because we have network slicing, then we have to have a selection function, which assists the AMF in ensuring that the mobile can be connected to or offered the correct network functions in order to support those slices.